my dears. Someone asked to see the kitty, so this is Dolly. This is my parents' cat. I'm at their home for the holidays. Hello, Dylan. Um, so, Happy New Year! I've been going through some old journals. You can see all these different journals. Um, I have shelves of them upstairs. <laughs> this was, I think, maybe my first. No. Well, this I got when I was 10. Um, and I had, there's a lot of pieces that I'd love to share, and I, I know there's just not time, but um, I wanted to share a couple things. I was interested to see where the seed started to sprout that turned into the person that I am now. Um, so, yeah, it was interesting. Um, there was a, well, where is it? Here we go. This little journal, this is from when I was 11. And I wrote, um, can you see what this is? This is my first phonetic alphabet. We've got A, A, B, D, E, F, blah, 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 I, I, J, K, O, M, N, O, U, U, and then so forth, A, you can see that's like a C with the beginning of an H. Um, sh, that's actually a part of an S. It doesn't go all the way quite in. And then a schwa. Uh. So, yeah, I used to write journal entries in that alphabet, which fortunately made them a little bit encoded. <laughs> but it made a lot more sense to me. Um, and I think, yeah, I could show you a little bit of that later. Yeah, here's some of that. You see that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, and I, you know, there's all kinds of stuff about boys and liking boys and what have you. But, um, or not boys, men, you know, they had to be mature. <laughs> um, and it's very human, but there were some interesting things in here. Um, this poem I wrote when I, I used to write a lot of poetry in like third, fourth, and fifth grade um, for for Dare too. Like I would win little prizes with my friend Jenny Hendricks, who's a writer. Um, so this was a poem that I wrote yeah, when I was, I think, fifteen. I wrote, "A wish is a piece of your soul." It sleeps deep inside you until you invite it to come out. Each wish is an opportunity to express yourself. Each wish is an opportunity to express your true self, your longing and desire. A wish is a burning piece of passion, a light with the flame which burns inside you for all eternity. You must listen to your heart to learn and to understand your soul. She whispers the truth. Every day you hear it. Now it is time to listen. I wrote that in January. Um, 97. And then this was from when I was, let's see, it was 96, so I was, 14. This little thing called The Way, Way Things Are. And when I started reading it, I was like, because I, I was like, I didn't realize it was a short story. I thought, boy, this doesn't sound right at all. Um, but it wasn't me. <laughs> so um, it's called The Way Things Are. And it actually was a musical that I was starting to write. Um, and it says, it says, like, chorus. Anyway. It says, I wanted a donut. One of the ones with chocolate frosting those little and those little rainbow-colored sprinkles. That was why I was like, that was never the kind of donut that I liked. <laughs> I asked my dad about it, but he said he couldn't afford, we couldn't afford such luxuries. I don't know what luxuries means, but it probably means neato, because everything that's neato he calls a luxury. That was also a clue. I was like, wait, I knew what a luxury was. Anyway. The chorus was, when I asked him why, he said, that's just the way things are. 
and that was the end of it. I couldn't have it. He does that all the time. I wanted a pink jump rope, the kind that's all spirally on the inside with those hard plastic handles. I wanted one just my size. When I asked my dad for one, he said to ask mom about it. When I told him I didn't have a mom, he just burped and put a paper bag to his mouth and tipped it like it was a cup of water or something. Then he just said I couldn't have uh, have a useless old thing like that. Um, I really wanted a jump rope, but I guess that's just the way things are. I wanted a present on my birthday, just one present on my birthday. I didn't care how small, just something I could call my own. I asked Daddy, but he just tipped that small paper bag he was holding upside down again and said nothing. My birthday came around and he didn't even wish me happy birthday. No one did. They forgot about my birthday, forgot about me, but that's just the way things are. I wanted a friend, the best friend, someone to talk to and play with, someone to tell all my secrets to and have slumber parties and eat popcorn. I asked my daddy how come I had no friends, why nobody wanted to be my friend. He said, that's just the way things are. I wanted a house, a little yellow house with white lining and a picket fence, a house that could be my home. I could eat donuts with chocolate frosting and those little rainbow sprinkles for breakfast. I could jump with my pink jump rope with the spiral middle and the hard plastic handles, the jump rope just my size. I could play with it on the back patio. I could invite my best friend over for a slumber party on my birthday and get one special present to call my own. When I told that to my dad, he put down the paper bag and started crying. I didn't figure out why he was crying until late that night when I was trying to fall asleep at my usual place on the corner of 3rd Street. I had never seen him cry before. He cried because all that about a donut and a jump rope and a present and my friend and a house, it doesn't have to be just the way things are. We can change it all, you and me. But we have to believe in ourselves and keep dreaming. One person can make a difference. I think that was, uh, let's see, that was 94. That was the year um, for school, we were invited to do some kind of a project and I, I did a project with the Salvation Army um, where we got a whole teams of people. We ended up getting, I think, I mean, over a hundred people together and we made these beautiful, um, we got this butcher paper and we made these decorations to take out to the Christmas Toy and Joy um, distribution that they did. I think they still, to this day, whatever, 18 years later, um, have kids decorate at the Toy and Joy. I've volunteered there many times, but, um, and we got a collection together to get clothing and a toy drive um, for kids. <laughs> it was a big deal. We were in the paper and, um, that was a big year for me. I became a vegetarian. I was paying a lot of attention to Martin Luther King and I wrote this thing about, um, Martin and, uh, I wonder what the world would be like if Jesus was a girl. Or maybe if Columbus had stayed where he belonged. If there were never slaves. The list goes on and on. If humans never existed. You can't change the past, they say, but you can change the future. That I know. I have a famous speech from Chief... I put the line in there. I can't remember what his real name is, and I don't want to call him by the name that people used to use just because of their ignorance to learn the correct pronunciation of a man's name.
could call him Seattle, but that's wrong. It's degrading. This is before the internet, but I was able to look it up just now. And it, um, from what I can tell, there are some different things on there, but it looks like Seelk or Seelk. Some say Seelk. They call him Seattle, but that's wrong. It's degrading. They named him after the precise, they named after him the precise thing he worked so hard not to have a city. Seattle. Imagine what he worked his whole life not to have and they named it after him. I'm too angered to talk more of the subject for the time being. <laughs> anyway. May we, may we bless all the parts of ourselves that brought us into who we are now. May we see and love all of the parts of ourselves and let go of anything that no longer serves us. May we carry forward into this new year our deepest, truest ringing of our spirits harmonizing with all this tapestry of life that we create together. May this year be one of fulfillment and joy and love and compassion for you and all beings. We are connected.